Welcome to a lesson on using area formulas to determine area under a graph. Our goals in this lesson are to determine the area under a graph by using geometric formulas and also explain the meaning of the area under a graph. In many cases it is useful to determine the area under a graph or under a curve. For example, if a car is traveling 65 miles per hour for three hours, the graph would look like this shown below, where we have the time in hours along the horizontal axis and the rate in miles per hour along the vertical axis. So because the car is traveling at a constant rate, we have a horizontal line over the interval from zero to three hours. When talking about the area under a curve or under a graph, we're referring to the area under the graph and above the x-axis. So the area under this graph would be the shaded region here. And notice how the shaded region is a rectangle, so we can find the area under this curve by using the area formula for a rectangle, which is area equals length times width. To understand the meaning of this area though, we'll leave the units on. So notice how the length would be 65 miles per hour and the width would be three hours. So when we find the product, notice how the units of hours would simplify out, giving us a product of 195 miles. So this area represents the total distance traveled over three hours when traveling 65 miles per hour. Let's look at another example. Here we see the graph of the manufacturing cost per phone up to 10,000 phones. Let's determine the area under this graph, then interpret the meaning. So the area under the graph would be the area under the graph and above the x-axis, which would be this area here. Notice how to find the area. We have to break this up into four different rectangles. So to find the total area, we'd find the area of each rectangle and then find the sum of the four areas. Before we find the area though, let's determine the units when we find the area. Notice how the vertical length would be cost in dollars per phone. So we'd have dollars per phone times the width would be the number of cell phones. So the units would be phones. So notice how the units of phones would simplify out, leaving us with dollars. And therefore the area is going to be the total cost of manufacturing these 10,000 phones. And now let's find the area of each rectangle, and then we'll find the total area. So we'll call this area sub one, area sub two, area sub three, and area sub four. So to find the area of this first rectangle, notice how we would have 160 times 2,000, which we see here. Next we'd have 100 times 3,000, which is here. Here we'd have 60 times 2,000, which is here. And then finally we'd have 20 times 3,000, which is here. So the sum of these products, which gives us the total area, comes out to 800,000, which represents the total cost of producing these 10,000 phones. Now once we have the total cost, we might also want to find the average cost per phone. To find the average cost per phone, we take the total cost, of $800,000 and divide by the total number of phones, which we know is 10,000, which comes out to $80 per phone. Let's notice how for the first 2,000 phones, the cost was $160 per phone, but after producing 10,000 phones, the average cost drops to $80 per phone. Now let's take a look at one more example. Sunset Nursery determines the cost to grow mesquite trees large enough to sell in dollars per tree to be c of x equals negative 0.2x plus 50, where x is the number of trees. So the function c of x is not the total cost function, it would be the marginal cost function, which is often denoted as c prime of x. Notice how c of x is cost in dollars per tree. We're asked to graph the function, determine the area under the graph on the interval from zero to 200, and interpret the meaning of the area. So notice how we have a linear function with a vertical intercept of 50 and a slope of negative 0.2. So the line would be this blue line here. Notice how we have a vertical intercept of 50 and the slope is negative 0.2. We want to consider the graph over the interval from zero to 200, this interval here. 
we want to determine the area under the graph over this interval, which would be the shaded region here. Notice how this would be a trapezoid. So to find the area under this curve, we'll have to use the area formula for a trapezoid, which is area equals one-half times the quantity B sub one plus B sub two times H, where B sub one and B sub two are the lengths of the two parallel sides, and H would be the height. So looking at our graph again, notice how the two parallel sides are these two sides here. So these lengths would be B sub one and B sub two, and this length along the horizontal axis would be the height of the trapezoid. So we'd have one half times the quantity fifty plus ten times the height, which is two hundred. Simplifying, we'd have one half times sixty times two hundred, which is equal to six thousand. Now to make sure we understand the meaning of this area, let's analyze the units. The units along the vertical axis are cost in dollars per tree, so we have dollars per tree. The units along the horizontal axis is trees, so dollars per tree times the number of trees. Notice how the units of trees simplifies out, leaving us with dollars, and therefore the area represents the total cost of producing two hundred mesquite trees large enough to sell. So as a sentence, we can say the total cost to grow two hundred mesquite trees large enough to sell is six thousand dollars. So we just looked at several examples where we can find the area under a curve using geometric formulas, but in many cases we can't, and we have to make an approximation of the area under the curve using rectangles. So in our next lesson, we'll take a look at approximating area under a curve using a predetermined number of rectangles. I hope you found this helpful.